Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to introduce uniform circular motion and show you the variables and equations that you're going to be using. Let's check it out. So in uniform circular motion, an object moves with constant speed in a circular path. That's the definition, okay? So uniform, the uniform part of the term means constant speed. You can think of it as uniform speed. Um, because it's going to move with constant speed, this thing will be a uniform motion around a circle. So that's why... Uh, that's what that word goes and then circular um, obviously a circular path right so it's a particular type uh, this is a very special type of circular motion uh, it's the simplest one and that's the one we're gonna look at now so imagine that you're going around a circle like this let's say this way um, at every point in the circle I've selected three different points here but really at every point in the circle you're gonna have what's called a tangential velocity okay you're gonna have a tangential velocity and it looks like this if you're going this way it's gonna look like this at this point at this point it would look like this and at this point it would look like this it's called tangential velocity because it's pointed it's direct a tangent from your path okay tangent just means um, one way to think about tangent is is if you're making a turn here and then you miss the turn then you would or you stop turning then you would just go in a straight line that's what tangent means okay Another way that you could have thought of that you can think about this is, for example, the tangent at this point is just a straight line that barely touches the circle right there. Okay, that's the same thing. Um, so you have a tangent velocity, sometimes it's referred to as a tangential speed. Uh, it's abbreviated VT or VTAN or just V. Okay, you also have a centripetal acceleration AC. Centripetal acceleration. Now, centripetal means center seeking. Um, and it just means it's pointing to the middle. This is also sometimes referred to as a radial acceleration. Radial. So instead of a C, you might see a rad, and the two are the same thing. Okay? And it's pointing towards the center, so it looks like this. Wherever you are. Notice that these two make an angle of 90 degrees at every point. This is an equation that relates to two. Centripetal acceleration is tangential velocity squared over r. And this little r here is distance to the center. Distance to center. Um, you can also think of this as the radius of your rotation. So the idea is that if you move on a, around a circle that has a radius r and you're at the edge, you are at a distance little r equals big r radius okay big r is a radius little r is a distance but in many cases they're effectively the same thing okay all right let's move on here so when an object completes one lap which we can also refer to as one lap is the same thing as one uh, revolution that's just a different name for it one rotation one spin one cycle so those are some of the keywords Okay, one lap, one revolution, one cycle. It covers a distance of one circumference. Okay, so if you go around an entire circle, you covered one circumference um, that for distance. Okay, your displacement is technically zero. Okay, if you go around an entire point back to the same point, but the distance is the circumference, which is two pi r, where r is the circle, is the radius of the circle that you made. You could think of this as two pi r as well because if you go around a circle of radius r then your distance from the center little r equals big r okay so a couple things when you go around a circle the distance is 2 pi r the time that it takes to make one cycle one spin one revolution is called a period okay period is the time to make one cycle um, it is represented by the letter t and it is in measured in seconds okay so if you think about the word period, um, probably the first thing that comes to mind is women's periods. Um, and I know that's awkward, but it's a cycle, right? And the time that it takes for a cycle is a period. So, you know, 28 days or whatever. Uh, but in physics, it's measured in seconds, okay? So it's the time for one cycle. Should make sense. The inverse of a period is frequency. And by the way, um, inverse mathematically means this, that the frequency is the inverse of a period, so it's 1 over t, okay? 
and I can say that T is just 1 over F. They're inverses of each other. Frequency, we use the letter little f, not to be confused with friction, which is also little f, and it's measured in hertz. Hertz. Frequency could also be measured in 1 over seconds. Here, it's seconds is your unit, so the, the units for frequency is the inverse of that, which is 1 over seconds, and we call that a hertz. There's another equation you should know here, uh, and this equation says that the initial velocity is 2 pi r. That's my, um, that's my distance okay, over the total time. So distance for one circle, 2 pi r, time for one circle, period. Okay? So this is just the velocity equals dis uh, displacement over time, uh, or actually speed equals distance over time. I can rewrite this in terms of f. So if t is in the bottom and f is the inverse of t, it shows up up here as a 2 pi r f. So you can use either one of these uh, versions of this equation, okay? Um, this vt right here is the same vt here. So what we're going to see later, um, and pretty soon actually, is that these two equations kind of work together, all right? Those are the two main equations for uniform circular motion. Um, <clears throat> one thing that people struggle with sometimes is, is how to figure out whether a piece of information that you're given is a period or a frequency. And one way to think about it is that period is seconds per cycle. How many seconds does it take to do something? Uh, and frequency is cycles per second. How many times can you get it done in one second? The frequency of something, how often it happens. And then here's how long does it take for it to happen. Okay? And then one last point before we do some examples is sometimes you might get something in terms of RPM. You'd be told something spins at, you know, 30 revolutions per minute. RPM stands for revolutions per minute. The problem with revolutions per minute is that you can't use uh, minutes as a unit in physics. So revs per minute has to be converted. I convert this into seconds by doing this. And when you do this, um, you get revs per second. Revs per second is the definition of frequency. Okay? So this is actually frequency. What's frequency? revolutions divided by 60, or actually the number of, of revolutions you have, so your RPM divided by 60, okay? So long story short, you have this equation here as well. If I give you um, 60 RPM, you plug in a 60 right here, and then your frequency will be 60 over 60, 1, okay? So you're always going to want to get, the, uh, you're always going to want to know your frequency, so if I give you an RPM, you have to convert that to frequency, because my equations are in terms of frequency and not in terms of RPM, okay? All right, so let's do this. Calculate the period, frequency, and speed of an object moving in uniform circular motion uh, of radius 10. So again, my radius is 10, and you're going around a circle of radius 10 at the edge of that circle, so that's also your little r. And it completes 100 cycles in 60 seconds. So what's your period? What's your frequency? So what I recommend you do here Whenever you have something like this, you do this in this much time, or you do this many things, or whatever, um, you can just write these as a fraction. Now, there's two ways you can write this. 100 cycles in 60 seconds means you're going to divide one by the other. Or you could write this backwards. You could have written 60 seconds um, for 100 cycles. Once you're here, it's pretty easy to figure out which one is which. One of these is the period, the other one is going to be the frequency. Here, seconds is in the bottom, and when seconds is in the bottom, I have frequency. Here, I have seconds at the top, so this is my period. So this, this uh, fraction right here, 60, 100 over 60, is my frequency. And this gives us 1.67 hertz. If I wrote it this way, this fraction here, 60 over 100, would have been my period, which is 0.6 seconds. Okay? And then the last thing is I want speed. Um, speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So it's just the velocity uh, without the direction, basically. Um, so it is 2 pi r over t or times f, doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the times f so I don't have to do a, a divide here. And then I'm going to get 2 pi r is 10. Frequency is 
And if you plug this in just a second, I get 104.9. I'm going to round this to 105 meters per second. All right. So what I recommend you do right now is pause the video and try to do this next one. See if you get it. Um, I'm going to keep going, but hopefully you'll try it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I have a radius of 10. Three minutes in one cycle. Three minutes. First of all, you can't use minutes. So I have to convert three minutes. One minute goes in the bottom. 60 seconds goes up here. Or maybe you just knew that you just had to multiply. 180 seconds. Okay. Um, and what is this? This is my period. So right away you know that once you convert that that has to be your period, okay? Because it's 180 in one cycle. Um, if you weren't sure, you could have stacked them up as a fraction. 180 seconds for one cycle. Seconds at the top. So period is 180 divided by 1 or simply 180. Frequency is 1 over t. So it's 1 over 180. I got it here. And it is 0 0.00556 hertz. And then we can find the velocity. V equals 2 pi r. Um, I could do times this number or divide it. So this is a nicer number. I got 0.35, so I'm rounding a little bit, but 0.35 meters per second, okay? <laughs> That's it for this one. Um, hopefully you agree, pretty straightforward. That's just showing how to use uh, information, how to figure out if information is, is period or frequency. Let's do this example real quick. The car below takes 10 seconds to go from A to B, so I can write that the time delta T from A to B is 10 seconds at a constant speed. Um, if it's not immediately obvious, just to confirm, this is circular motion. Circular motion doesn't mean you necessarily have to go around an entire circle. As long as a tiny little piece of your circle, uh, of your motion is circular, <coughs> this is circular motion, okay? It says it has a, the semicircle has a radius of five. Uh, this is potentially confusing, that's why I put it here. The semicircle having a radius of five, it just means that if you were to complete a circle here, this circle would have a radius of five, so that's just the number you're going to use. The fact that it's a radius of a semicircle doesn't matter. Okay. In fact, any kind of slightly curved path has a radius. Let's say, and, and you shouldn't draw this, but I'm just going to sketch something here. Let's say you're moving this way, and then you're moving this way. In order to switch from one to the other, let's say you do a slight, um, you have a slight turn, something like this. <coughs> well, this is a piece of a bigger circle, right? And then this would be the radius of that circle. So any kind of curvature, any kind of curve has a radius, okay? That's the radius, and you're moving at the edge of this radius, so that is your distance from the center, okay? Those are just most of the time the same thing. Um, and I want to know, find the period, so, and some other stuff. So what is the period? So it takes 10 seconds to go from here to here, so my period is going to be 20, okay? This is, again, potentially tricky, which is why I put this here. And I want you to know that the definition of period is the time that it takes to make a full rotation, even if you don't make a full rotation. For example, um, let's say it took you mm, uh, 10 seconds to go from here to here. If this took 10 seconds, this is one quarter of a circle, then the period would have been 40 seconds. Okay? So you can just multiply it um, to get a full circle. But that's not the case, um, but hopefully that makes sense. The period here is 20, not 10, not anything else, okay? Um, find the tangential velocity. Now this is just plug and chug. V equals 2 pi r over t. 2 pi r is 5, t is 20. And if you do this, you get a 1.57 meters per second. And then for part c, the centripetal acceleration, it's just v squared over r. So 1.57 squared over r, which is 5. This gives you 0.49 meters per second 
squared. Okay, so these are the answers for this question. All right, and then one last point that I want to make here, one note I want to add is that even though it says here, even though this is a really important, by the way, conceptual point, uh, if you have any conceptual, uh, if your professor gives you any conceptual test questions, you might see this show up. It's a very classic one. Um, and a lot of people get confused here. But even though the object speed is constant, right, usually constant speed tells us the acceleration is zero. You're used to seeing that a lot. Um, even though the speed is constant, the direction changes. Therefore, the velocity changes and the acceleration is not zero. Now, let me show you. Velocity is a vector, okay? So, as a vector, it's made up of two things. It has a magnitude, which is speed, and it has a direction, which is usually given by your theta. So here's the thing. If you go around a circle with constant speed, it means that this is a 5 here, this is a 5 here, etc. So your speed stays the same, but your direction changes. And because your direction changes, your V changes as well. Okay? If either one of the parts that make up a vector change, then the vector itself changes, okay? That's what happens here. Because direction changes, velocity changes. And remember, acceleration is defined in terms of velocity. Acceleration is change of velocity over change in time. So since the velocity changes, right, it's, you can make sure you know it's a velocity by putting a little vector hat there. Um, uh, so th since the velocity changes, there's an acceleration. Another way that you can remember this it's just by kind of having a mental picture that this is always the same number, so let's say 555, five. yet there is an acceleration this way, okay? So this is the only instance, circular motion is the only time where a constant speed doesn't mean acceleration zero. If you're moving in a straight line and your speed's constant, then your acceleration is certainly zero, okay? That's it for this one. I uh, hope it helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions.